50 live events and conference championships. Who will be the next All-American? Get on your feet! Another chance! Record breaker. It's a new American record! To reach their championship aspirations. Oh, baby, here we go! Now, good afternoon, soccer fans. Welcome to beautiful Berkeley, California for the 2017 edition of one of the best rivalries in all of Bay Area women's soccer. It is number 24, Santa Clara. They are in the East Bay this afternoon to go up against goal-scoring savant Abigail Kim and the California Golden Bears. Both teams coming off of big victories in their season openers on Friday nights. And on that note, we welcome you inside of Edwards Stadium on Goldman Field alongside former U.S. Women's National Team member and a national champion with the 2001 Santa Clara Broncos, Allie Wagner. I'm Kate Scott. We are so happy to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon because, Allie, you know firsthand when these two get together, they never disappoint. No, I mean, when you think about college experiences, college sports, college soccer, you talk about these games, and these are the moments you live for as an athlete and as a soccer player. You want these rivalries, and I look back and I go, those greatest goals that you score are in moments like this against teams like this where the rivalry and the passion is so hot. And someone looking to prevent those goals today, at least for the University of California, is their senior goalkeeper, Boyd. Is she going to be fun to watch, Emily Boyd? Yeah, I mean, she's been terrific for this program since she came in, and I think last year she started stepping up her play even more. When we spoke to Neil McGuire coming into this match, not only does he rave about her ability as a shot stopper, her ability to organize the back line and lead from a place of emotion, a, a place of instruction and experience. She's very tactically astute, and she has that personality that can rise up and really lift her team when they need it the most. And the Bears are really going to need her tonight. If Friday's opener is any indication, that Santa Clara attack is incredible. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, Jerry Smith is usually so humble and downplays the attack of his team or the quality of his team, but he didn't mince words with us. And when he talked about this group coming into this season, he said, look, we haven't had this firepower. We haven't had this talent for a long time, probably in the past 10 years or so. And you saw it in full effect in this opening match against San Jose State. They, in fact, had another goal that was called back because of a wrongful offside call, but this team looks to be firing on all cylinders, and this is just the beginning of the season, so it's, for me, I look at this going, where can this team go from here? It's going to be so much fun. Number 24, Santa Clara trying to make it two in a row over the Bears. Bears looking for a little revenge from last season. It is Pac-12 soccer, and it's coming your way right after the break. You're watching Pac-12 Bay Area. Home of the Cal Bears and the Stanford Cardinal. Available on Xfinity. Some kids you can't coach, you can't teach to be great. They just have it in them. Saturday, witness greatness with the premiere of the Pac-12 Network Original Series. 12 Greatest. The 12 Greatest Football Players from every Pac-12 institution. 12 back-to-back -back episodes. The 12 Greatest. All 12 episodes debut Saturday starting at 1. And then stream the entire first season on Pac-12 now. As my swimming career progressed, I started hearing the Cal name and associating so many well-known swimmers with the name Cal. And if I could be in the same environment that they were able to achieve such great things, then that was one of the things that I really wanted to do. Coach Terry McKeever really emphasized the fact that it's not just swimming, but it's just growing as a person and as a student. Out of the pool, they recognize every single person for their academic achievements. There's a really important culture of being able to not just do swimming, but really thrive in the classroom as well. We expect a lot of out of each other. If one of us has a bad test mark or anything, you know, it's not from a place of being hard on each other, but just setting the standard really high so we can achieve really great things no matter how hard things get. Noemi Thomas, Cal Women Swimming. Go Bears! Saturday, kick off the 2017-2018 season with a full week of non-stop football action. First, take a look back at the legends of Pac-12 football with the premiere of 12 Greatest. Then, get the lowdown on everything you need to know this season with inside Pac-12 football season previews. After that, it's time to get your game face on. The best of the West take on non-conference opponents in back-to-back matchups. Football kickoff week. Coverage begins Saturday on Pac-12 Network. 
Welcome back to the Pac-12 Network, everybody. As we get set for Santa Clara and Cal, Jerry Smith now in his 31st season at the helm of this Broncos squad. Allie, who are you looking forward to seeing today? Well, I was looking forward to seeing Kelsey Hedge, but she took a knock in that opening match against San Jose State, so that moves Loera into the center of midfield. Vies are going to be on Turnboil, Turnbow and Doyle on the flanks. Jerry Smith had high praise for both of them, and then up top, Maddie Gonzalez, Maria Sanchez. That duo looks to be developing some chemistry as well in the preseason. Yeah, had a great one-two punch for the first Broncos goal on Friday night as we take a look at Neil McGuire's California squad. And, you know, they've got some young players out there, but Abby Kim, I mean, had the brace the other night. How, how can you not have some eyes focused on her? We'll see what she can do against this Bronco line. So here we go, the 2017 first matchup between the Broncos and Bears, because as we all know, these two meet in the postseason often. California in the all-gold uniforms. Santa Clara with the maroon shorts, white socks, and white socks. I don't want to jinx them, Kate. We want both <laughs> of them in there, right? Good points. Don't start off the season that way. There was a ladder and goal for Santa Clara this afternoon. Maria Sanchez getting after it early against defender Indigo Gibson for California. She's one of those players that in the spring season she came in with the Broncos, started to get some time, and the coaching staff raved about her and her abilities. Obviously, she's played with the Mexican national team, played in at least one match in the Women's World Cup, but she's someone that we're going to see progress as this season goes along because she's not quite fit yet, as Jerry Smith said. California able to clear it out. Santa Clara regains possession. As Ali mentioned in the open, that is going to be one of the things to watch both for California and everybody tuning in. The Santa Clara attack. Jerry Smith's just very, very excited about it this season. And it's been a long time, I feel like, <laughs> since they've raved about the attack of the Broncos, so it puts a smile on my face. Who doesn't love good attacking soccer? Exactly. Emily Boyd under a bit of pressure from Maddie Gonzalez. She'll be up top with Sanchez to start. Santa Clara threatening here early. And they're threatening, though, because Cal's giving them easy turnovers in their defensive third. Just some silly mistakes early on here by California. George pushing ahead to Sanchez again. Sanchez able to for force the first corner of the afternoon. First five minutes, always teams come out firing. Santa Clara's going to take the quick corner here. Catch Cal. Kayla George with the service over Boyd's head, but it's a little bit too far for anybody to do anything with. But here's Julie Doyle. Scored the second goal for Santa Clara on Friday night. One of numerous freshmen that Smith just couldn't couldn't say enough about during our phone call. That was such a cracker of a shot. And I think she hasn't been playing all of preseason because she's been nursing a few injuries as well. Chasing this one down to Santa Clara. She's stepped into the starting lineup today. After that head injury that Allie mentioned. Santa Clara getting everybody involved already today. There's senior Kelly Pay on the far right side. Kelly Fitzgerald just possesses her. And that's a staple of this Bronco program is the ability to get those outside backs forward here as you see Pay trying to drive that sideline there and great cover 1v1 defending by Fitzgerald there. Sanchez taking on a slew of Bears. Almost able to get the cross off. She thought she might have had a corner. But our center referee, Teron Osdenier. That's not as a California goal kick as we get a look at the Santa Clara keeper, Melissa Ladder. What a revelation she was last year. Smith was rotating her in the backup for a lot of games and allowed her to earn the spot and held on to it. And what a deep run they made in the playoffs. 
surprising even Smith, I think, at how far they went into the lead eight. Yeah, that was an absolutely incredible run. I have a feeling we may see highlight of that goal against Stanford, but got to get back to it right now because Maddie Gonzalez and Maria Sanchez up top. And speaking of the NCAA tournament, a huge double overtime win over Stanford in the second round. And I was at this game. I mean, it was back and forth, back and forth. This was a game that Andy Sullivan tore her ACL in, but the Broncos, they found that magic moment in overtime. Knocked off Stanford. At Stanford. Absolutely massive win. Allowed them to get past that NC State before falling to Georgetown in the Elite Eight. But and they could even won that game. They had opportunities, so... Just one of those seasons that was a bit of a Cinderella story. Things came together for them all at the light, at the right time. And that's one of the things Smith talked to us about was the ability to peak when you need to. They don't need to be peaking right now as we watch this game play out. It's about figuring out what personnel go together. It's about figuring out the chemistry and, and what formations you want to float in and out of. It's not about getting it right right now. Hey, Lucas playing it ahead. Trying to get Cal into the offensive third. It has been all Santa Clara so far this afternoon. There's another freshman that Smith's excited about. Kelly Turnbow, number 10. Jerry Smith excited for a number of reasons, especially because Santa Clara picked to finish first this year in the WCC after finishing third last season. BYU and Pepperdine tying for that WCC title. Maybe that's because Ashley Hatch... Went on to the pro game and is no longer at BYU, but they gave Santa Clara the nod. California, finally down in front of Louder. Melissa handles that one easily. Maggie Bell, number 14 for California, slotted into the starting lineup this afternoon, a sophomore out of Granite Bay. Coach McGuire loves what Bell brings to this California squad. Well, she's one of the most competitive athletes that he's ever coached. Turnbow out to Doyle. Surrounded by four Bears, able to get it out to Gonzalez, but just a little bit too far. Yeah, and even though it's a heavy pass there on that right flank by Doyle, I like to hear her the decision, her ability to come inside, recognize that the Cal players are collapsing on her, and then she's going to try to re-kick it out wide and hit that space. Just overcooks it a bit. And Santa Clara, I mean, early on here, I know it's only seven and a half minutes, eight minutes in, but this group is flying. I mean, you can see how quickly they can get into the attack, and they're spreading the pitch out really well with their with their ball movement, with the personnel. Good movement thus far. This is similar to their start on Friday night against San Jose State. Cal a little bit sluggish and jittery in their opener against UC Irvine, but the Broncos right off the bat got after it just like they are here. And they just look like they've got soccer players out there, players making decisions that know how to read each other because this early in a season, it's so hard to get chemistry right, to, to read each other, and that timing is usually off, but they, for the most part, look pretty connected. And that says something just about the decision making these players have and that, that tactical sense that they have coming in. Haley Lucas, a bit of a miss hit on that free kick. California now needs to track back. It's Kelly Pay, one of two all WCC preseason selections for the Broncos. And just as I say that, squandered opportunity. <laughs> I like the patience initially and then Pay decides to go direct on that one. But she is a great player. St. Kate Scott. Four-year starter for the Broncos. Which is a hard thing to do these days. To be a four-year starter on any collegiate squad. That's so true. In my days it was just a foregone conclusion. <laughs> the depth just wasn't there. Santa Clara again looking to switch fields. 
Here comes Michaela George. Takes on Heather Wally. Randy Niles there for a little support. Back to Guru Birdsvon, who's dispossessed in Santa Clara on the attack. Here comes Doyle. Doyle trying to turn the corner. Cut back, intercepted. A nice play there by the freshman. Santa Clara maintaining pressure. Sanchez directing traffic. Just send it into the box. There's that left foot then. Smith told us to keep an eye on today. Yeah, I mean, she's been active. I, I've liked her hold-up play in the early goings of this match, but I, I go back to that right flank right now. How explosive is Doyle on the ball? Just getting around the edge time and time again. Could be a long day for the Cal left side. Bears trying to get the ball to their goal scorer up top, Abigail Kim. And fair to say that, you know, Santa Clara looks to be the anomaly in how well they're clicking this early on. Cal looks like a normal team in their second game of, of the season. Just trying to figure it out. They haven't had any sort of tempo, any sort of rhythm yet. And you got to look to the center mids to provide that. Let's see if they hold with this shape. Sitting in a 4-5-1 for the most part. Flexible wing mids. There's Kim. Finally getting a touch on it. Miranda Niles off of Kim. That could have been dangerous, but Louder gathers it. And just as quickly, Santa Clara can attack, so can the Bears. I mean, that's a shot that almost lands fortuitously at Kim's feet. Doesn't get enough on the deflection. I just know how California scored both of its goals on Friday night. It's very strong. Looking forward that time, unable to connect. But what a great story it is to just see number seven out there for California. 712 days since she had last stepped on the pitch to play soccer for Cal. She again looking to press forward. The number seven missed all of last season and the majority of the 2015 season for the Bears so Coach Neil McGuire and all of her teammates just so happy to see her back out there this season so many players would retire at that, if that was your situation it takes a lot of mental strength to get through that and know that it's someday you potentially will get back on the pitch Looks on pass touched out of bounds as we take a look at the 5-7 only a sophomore member of the Iceland national team. Pardon me, the Norwegian national team. Team touches it out, and California has their first corner of the afternoon. Fitzgerald to serve it in for California. Looking back post. Stacy cleverly. A bit too much on that left footed shot. That's a really good service by Fitzgerald there. I like the trajectory, trajectory on it, but Pay does well to get under it and flick it on, get it out of harm's way. No one from Berkeley really crashing in on that. Goal kick will roll out of bounds. Ladder had her first career clean sheet. Actually, last season in the Broncos match against California. 
last year, her first year as the Santa Clara starter. Now has eight clean sheets to her name. Both squads with veteran keepers here today. Abby Kim looking for help, and Heather Wally is there. The Bears have numbers. Wally's cross, though. That's where she wanted it to be. We take a look back at last year's match between the Bears and the Broncos. Double overtime is when it finally came to an end. And the Broncos were so good last year in their overtime. Ridiculous finish there. Edge of the box, Jenna Roaring. She had some big moments last year for the Broncos when they counted most. And that's one she's never going to forget, that's for sure. Real like, as you mentioned, Allie, overtime should really be named Bronco time at this point. <laughs> 16 consecutive overtime matches without a loss for Santa Clara. There have been a couple of seasons. It's pretty impressive when you consider what it takes to win in those overtime moments. The coaching, as you see Jerry Smith there, that goes into preparing players for those times. It's the details usually. 10 of the Broncos' 23 matches last season went into an extra period. California starting to find their rhythm. Yeah, and much better right there playing out of the back. I mean, Emily Boyd was the one who distributed it. They played out of the pressure. Santa Clara was trying to apply. Nice little triangle passes out of it. Ends up hitting a too heavy of a pass to spring Kim, but still much better playing out of the back, finding their way into the middle third. Yeah, McGuire now in his 11th season as the head coach here in California. Friday night's victory over EC Irvine. A big one for Neil. He's now the all-time winningest head coach of the Cal Women's Soccer Program. 125, 63, and 25. Pass to Kevin Boyd with Friday night's 2-1 victory. Yeah, time is flying. He has been here at <laughs> 11 seasons right? already. That is shocking to me. I'm right there with you. Brought on a couple of new assistant coaches this season. So Crystal May going off to Utah to begin his head coaching career. And just good pressure there by the Broncos. They're pressing in high, and it's not that initial ball they win, but it's those second and third passes that they pick off as Cal can't find their way out. And now just really good attacking shape to take advantage of it. Lie out Gandewall, looking wide to Doyle. Kelly Pay now. Collision. 50 50 ball, though. <laughs> Everybody just going for it. Definitely 50 50 ball, but I go back to that initial ball tried to play into the box by the Broncos. Pay just didn't get enough on it. There was four players wide open at the back post as we get a look at the challenge. Once the ball was kicked out and Kim was trying to drive on it. Good step by the Bronco players. Two players just going after it. Sophomore from Seattle Christian though. Okay after taking that knock from number 22, Alex Loera. Cat Yu was in on that sandwich too. California looking for number 14, Bell. It's a little bit too much on it. There's Alex Loera, 5'7 freshman out of the academy back in Thornton, Colorado. And someone that was brought in to be a center back for this Bronco team, but because of that injury in the center midfield to head, she's had to move into that role today. First look at Gudrun on a daughter. Number 20, number three, pardon me, in the back for Santa Clara. Gibson. 
Pushing forward to Cleverly. He's looking for Kim. This is the Cal attack. They may not possess it that often in the offensive third, but just a couple of passes. They're just trying to get Abigail Kim on the run. Well, you don't have to, and I love the pocket of space that Cleverly was sitting in to receive that ball. She's the one who springs Kim, or tries to at least. It's a good-looking attack. Two passes, and they're almost in with that pace of Kim. Always a threat. And Bronco's doing well to absorb it. They've got to know that she's trying to get in behind time and time again. So your default is to drop if you can't step her offside. Wally pushing forward. Galera slows it down to George. Good bit of wind now this afternoon here in Berkeley. It's always windy here. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yep. We're blowing more or less from the top right corner of your screen to the bottom left. So the wind at the back of the Broncos. There's Sanchez. And it's a, it's a little detail, but that's something you have to be aware of as a player. For Cal, that ball is going to hang up if they try to spring him. And for the Broncos, you might want to just take a little bit off it, keep it on the carpet, so you have more control over where that ball dies. California looking for Heather Wally. Got wheels. She certainly does, and I think the front, or excuse me, the Bears have been more active on this right flank with her getting in the attack. Wally plays both outside back and striker for the Bears. Started Friday night's match in the back line and then moved up to left striker later in the contest. Will McGuire says we could see that again here today. Julie Doyle tried to take on a couple of bears. Here's Abby Kim. Nice bit of defense there by Kat Yule, but Kim gets it back. Looking across. And a couple of bears in the box, but neither of them able to get a good shot on frame. And Kat Yule's had a couple right, of challenges with Abby Kim. On this one, she doesn't win out on it. Abby Kim makes a meal of it. And serves a brilliant ball across. Two players there. Got to communicate better so you can get a better shot on frame. Redirect that across louder. Abby Kim active early on. And Kat Ewell is going to have her hands full all day long. That's a matchup that Cal's going to want to take advantage of. No doubt about that. The 5-8 Kim against the 5-3 Ewell. And just the pace difference, the strength difference. Got to give the edge to Abby Kim up top. Kim served it over, gets it back. Looking for Cleverly there in the middle. But the Broncos able to intercept it to get out of trouble. Well, Ali, as we approach the 25-minute mark here in the first half, what are, you, what are you seeing from both teams? As Cal again looking for Wally down the right flank. Two Broncos to beat. Able to get a service. Santa Clara, though, handles it. I think you're seeing how quickly Cal can strike. Their ability to go direct and get in behind just with Abby Kim's pace with Heather Wally on this right side. Broncos started strong. I think they've petered out a bit. I think a couple of their possessions, they, they've been conceding and trying to go too direct, whether it be from Pei or Arna Daughter in that back line on the right side. They're, they're the ones that are trying to play make instead of finding their center mids, whether it be Loera, whether it be Argondewal. Just a little bit of more connection, I think, and they'll find more rhythm again. Here's 
Here's Bell. Nice touch along the touchline. Kelly Pay, though, right back to it. Here's Doyle showing off some fancy footwork of her own. Doyle continuing on. California able to get back behind the ball, but that could have been dangerous. You see how quickly the Santa Clara attack had moved. Yeah, and, but so many good moments from both those players. Yeah, on that left flank right there by Maggie Bell. I mean, that's a nifty little step right there. Pay does a nice job to recover, and then here comes Santa Clara down the other way with Doyle on it. I mean, just some individual brilliance right now. We're lucky to witness. Here's Maddie Gonzalez. And that's good decision making right there. You can see Berkeley's got all their players back behind the ball. Use that width. Try to spread them out and then to open up those central channels. First look there at number four, Emily Smith, freshman center back for California. Seen a lot of Heather Wally the last few minutes. This has worked well for Cal. But second time, Wally a bit off with her service. And that's something that the Broncos are going to look to solve is who pins back who, right? If you've got Turnbow on this left flank, if she's the one that's having to defend against Wally, or you're releasing her to go forward, it's going to be a fun matchup to keep an eye on. Niles. A bit too aggressive. Junior out of Castro Valley. Getting a little jersey there. And just a silly foul. You've got the defender facing her own goal in a, in a difficult position. Make her play out of it. Here comes Santa Clara again. Once again, it's Julie Doyle with the ball on her feet. She's just finding a way to get herself involved. Yeah, she looks pretty talented over there on that right flank. <laughs> and the confidence she has as a freshman just to take those players on. Maybe the decision making will, will take an uptick as the season progresses and so she can keep possession more often. But you can see how explosive she is. Here's Berg's Vaughn. Lays it off to Niles. Touches ahead to Abby Kim, but Kim it's just a few too many steps towards the Bronco goal. Good idea, though, by California. And the right idea by Nile to drive inside and to change those passing lanes with every touch. Just needs to release that ball sooner because Kim was just on that edge waiting for it. As Allie mentioned, had a brace on Friday. First multi-goal multi game of her career. Three goals and three assists last season as a member of the Pac-12 All-Freshman team. Yeah, it might be your first. You don't think it's going to be your last. <laughs> you get that feeling too? Absolutely. Yeah, I think you might be on to something. Broncos could be on to something here. Michaela George. Only able to get back into it. Berg's Vance helps her out. And a good battle between those two. Nice ball laid in stride right there for Turnbow, but Wally, great recovery, shoves her off there. A little risky because I think if Turnbow goes down, the ref might call that one. Dial to Kim. And when Cal's having success, they're finding these little pockets of space in front of that back line. Niles has been sitting in it. Cleverly's been sitting in it. 
Broncos are going to have to figure that out. I know you always have to concede something, but those are the moments that they've got to be a little wary of. Because if someone gets in their faces up, they're going to be able to spring him. Official having a conversation with Michaela George before showing her the yellow cards. We take another look at his challenge. And that's Miranda Nile sitting in that scene, that pocket. That was the second time in that spell of possession that she received it in there. And George just comes in from behind. It sure appears as if Niles is going to need a substitution here. We approach the 30th minute in the first half. What are the trainers taking the day off? <laughs> <laughs> Gingerly walking out. Obviously not that worried about <laughs> Niles. You see. There they go. Coach. There they go. Corey Callahan there on the right. California trainer on Forsyth. Healthy Nile to the sideline. So Neil McGuire will reposition things for his Bears. And you mentioned earlier the formations that these teams have started in, but both showed multiple formations on Friday. And, and as you also mentioned, Allie, it's early in the season, so it's still not even sure really what formation you're going to play for the year. No, I, I would... I would be hesitant to even consider that these teams will end up looking like this come postseason if they do in fact get there. But but that's the beauty of I believe this this next generation is that a lot of these players are very comfortable flipping in and out of systems on the fly. They're used to it. It's necessary. And a team like the Broncos, Jerry told us, you know, it, it benefits them. They don't want to be matched up in the same formation because they think that open style will suit them with their attacking personalities. Number six, Stevie Prino. Check in for the Broncos. And that was really well read by her as well because they knew that they wanted to spring Wally. They didn't pay on to it like they knew and snuffed it out. It didn't matter. The ref calls it back, but good awareness. Prino, number six there in the wall in front of Indigo Gibson's free kick in California. Trying to make some substitutions of their own. There would be a little bit of confusion. As number eight, Emma Weston, checks in for the Bears. There's Maggie Bell. Bell. And the Bears' service so far today has left a, a little something to be desired, but they have been in the offensive third quite a bit in the last 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I think the only real good chance they had was that ball that Abby Kim sent across around the six yard box about ten minutes ago or so. That's the only real good quality chance they've had to get on the end of. Maggie Bell checks out. Another freshman for California. Number 23, Caroline Clark checks in. Lots of new faces on both of these teams. Ten newcomers on the Santa Clara squad including transfer Maria Sanchez. Eleven freshmen on the Cal squad and here's Abby Kim. One of the veterans as a sophomore. I thought she was in on that one. Looked like it. Good recovery by Kat Yule there. Here's Kim again. Showing off her skills to Cleverly. We'll pull it back. And Wally has Weston to a right. Try to send Kim to the corner, but there's our wins picking up. Yeah, and that's one of those moments there by Heather Wally that I know you want to get Abby Kim faced up in behind, player to space, use that pace, but it wasn't on. Player to feet, Abby Kim's got to recognize it, Wally's got to recognize it, player to feet, then build off of that moment, shift the defense ever so slightly. Allie Wagner, Kate Scott with you this afternoon here in Berkeley. Appreciate all of you tuning in to watch some Pac-12 soccer this afternoon and WCC soccer for that matter. Here's Maria Sanchez. With the left foot gets through a couple of bears. Gonzalez with a rocket. And there's our first goal of the afternoon. Maddie Gonzalez 
had the Broncos' first goal on Friday night. And she's got their first this afternoon here in Berkeley. What a finish by the sophomore out of Santa Rosa. Well, Maddie Gonzalez might have been the one to finish it, but she's also the one who starts it off. She drives centrally, drags those players to her from Cal Berkeley, and then I don't know how this ball skips through by Maria Sanchez. Berkeley does a poor job clearing it. Lands at the feet right at the edge of the box for Maddie Gonzalez. She winds up, keeps it low to the ground. I think all those players in front of Emily Boyd block her line of sight. She can't get down quick enough, and Broncos find themselves up one nothing. Beautiful finish. Just goes to show, sometimes you put it down on the carpet, even if it's by the ankles of the goalkeeper, it's so hard to get down that quickly and make that save. California threatening right off the kick. And almost against the run of play as I thought Cal Berkeley was finding their way into the match. And then the Broncos come down into their attacking third one time in the last maybe seven minutes or so and find themselves a goal. Well, as Jerry Smith told us when we talked to him earlier this week, Maddie Gonzalez is just an absolute handful. And she was quick in that space. And uh, three players around her, they think they can get uh, something on that ball. They think they're going to tackle her. And she just is quick to release it. And that's what ultimately springs Maria Sanchez down that flank. And then I like her movement to get in the box, to get out in that rebound. A lot of good things there. Gonzalez, a member of the WCC All Freshman team last year. 11 starts. Appeared in all 23 matches for the Broncos. Jerry Smith said that she was dealing with injury for a good chunk of the season, but when she came back healthy, had a brace in their NCAA tournament opener against Long Beach State, and has just continued that form here into 2017. And she started off her campaign very strong, took that knock, and they had to manage her. Here's freshman Emma Weston for California. And Emma Weston, you can just see in that play there, clearly likes her right foot. It was on her right leg, which was the, the side that was close to the defender, but it didn't matter. She's still keeping on that right leg, tries to bend it in with the outside of her right foot. Something to rec recognize if you are the defender sized up against her. Weston. Comes to Cal from Stockholm, Sweden. Number of internationals on this Cal squad here in 2017. It seems to be the way the college game is going a bit. Does, Most doesn't players it? have some internationals at this point. A lot of scouting going on overseas. Mentioned Daisy cleverly. She also from abroad, Auckland, New Zealand. In to go Gibson on the ball now out of Las Flores, California. <laughs> Keep it low. Good mix on both of these teams. Caroline Clark fouled by Kelly Pay and the Santa Clara bench not happy about it. Who wants to talk this over? And it's just the studs up that the referee did not like. She gets the ball absolutely, but she comes in with those cleats up. And every time you show those studs, okay to make that call. So frustrating, though, as a player. Um, she gets to the ball first. That's clear. Jerry Smith having a quick conversation with our center referee, Teron Alzanier. Everyone's satisfied now, so we'll get back to it. Santa Clara with a 1-0 lead off the second goal of the season for Matty Gonzalez. Nice and louder. Nice veterans catch there. Both goalies that we have out here this afternoon just really exude that veteran confidence. 
I think with goalkeeping, it's it's not always a matter of age; it's attitude. I think Louder picked up her form last year and hasn't looked back. What's that do for you as, as a field player, having someone like that? Well, I was never close you. enough to the goalkeeper to really pay <laughs> much attention. I just wanted them to make the saves and give me the ball. But, I mean, it's massive. It's absolutely massive to have that confidence. And usually when the goalkeeper has that level of confidence and attitude, they're communicating well. Caroline Clark shakes pay. Unable to find anyone in the box. Weston fights for it back. And Pridham's lucky to get away with that one because she put that ball right back into the retreating players of Cal Berkeley. Nice switch there by the Broncos. And here's Pridham. Kayla George looking for Gonzalez. Can't find her. Is our game to all. Tripped up on first look at number 10, Luca Deza for California. Freshman out of nearby Belmont, down the peninsula, just south of San Francisco, making her collegiate debut this afternoon. Someone that Coach McGuire said is a true number 10. She'll be someone fascinating to keep an eye on and see how she develops. Both squads graduated their number 10s last year. It'll be interesting to see how the new number 10s fit in. Good service by the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, Ariel Ship was the number 10 last year, but she isn't a 10. So, you know, she's, a, she's more of a target player, someone that's <laughs> not going to set play as much. Some substitutions. Julie Doyle, as expected, checks out. Guru Bergsvon checks out for California. We'll get our first look at a couple of new players. Number 12, Anya Kohler, a shirt sophomore midfielder, checking in for the Bears. Right to it. Kohler with her first touch, just seconds in. They're doing a great job using every part of the field so far here in this first half. And that was Kelly Pay who played that nice ball to switch it. And you can just see the expansive shape of the Broncos. Here's Kat Yule coming up from her center back position. Talk about making the most of her time. Kat Yule doesn't often start for Santa Clara, but she is. What a great job for them here this afternoon. She's got that soccer IQ, and you can just see that she's reading the game extremely well. for Deza. Number 13, Kayla Fong. And a player again looking to switch fields. And now California's on the attack. Deza ahead to Weston. Great read there by Louder. That could have been trouble. And that was one of the few times that the Cal Berkeley player got on the ball, looked up, and no one was on the straightening line because Abby Kim's not in the game. But it was that late run out of midfield that was so well timed by Emma Weston to get in behind. Dallas and Sanchez looking for each other. 
It's going to be a fun one-two punch to watch this season. There's more substitutions. Well, coming up in just a few minutes, we'll send you back to San Francisco, our Pac-12 Network studios for our Pac-12 halftime report. Chris Francis is in studio today. We'll have a Willie Tagger feature for you football fans and also some highlights from the rest of the Pac-12 conference on this Sunday afternoon. A full slate of soccer here on the network on Friday and another full slate here on this Sunday. As the crowd tries to get their Bears going here at Goldman Field at Edwards Stadium. Bears trailing Santa Clara one to nothing. Maddie Gonzalez with the finish for the Broncos. And after a, a start that was all Santa Clara, Ali, the, the Bears have definitely settled in. Yeah, and it's been a game that's been played in the midfield since then. Both teams having trouble progressing into that final third, a bit hasty in their decision making to get in there. Such as that ball there. Amy Lucas. Looking ahead to Kayla Fong. As he said, Allie, lots of play in the midfield past number of minutes. What does, it, what does California need to do to, to get some more chances in that final third? Again, it, it's just decision-making as you enter that final third. I mean, I think it helps having Abby Kim on the field. Not that Fong is not capable as, as a striker herself, but it, it's about the decision-making when they get up there. So if Abby Kim can, when she's in the, on the pitch, come feet more often so she's not as predictable, always trying to get in behind, just changing it up a bit. I think Berkeley's done well when they've had those runs coming out of midfield, but they just haven't held the ball long enough for that to develop. Broncos looking for Sanchez. Here's Janae Gonzalez. Just hits that one. She wants another crack at it. See the frustration on her face. Both teams, as we expected, using a lot of players here in just the, the second match of the season. Both coaches want to see what they have. Tough challenge there by Haley Lucas. Yeah, again, I mean, this is only the second game of the season, so it's about feeling things out, seeing what, what personnel step up, seeing what personnel mesh as well in certain situations. So it's a lot of discovery going on right now. Let me see Another card. It's in a busy first half for a center referee. Would you expect anything less in this rivalry? <laughs> Here's Sanchez. And the Broncos will have a corner here as the first half winds down. Another decent delivery there by Sanchez, curling that one in. Good trajectory on it. Let's see if they go short here. You have two players coming out. Opt to go 2v2 with that personnel. Both Janae and Sanchez, so quality on the ball. And leave it for the lefty Sanchez. Sends it in. Bronco able to get her head on it. There's her daughter. But just up and over the crossbar. And Pritam almost clears this. That header's going in. I mean, if she just doesn't touch it, it might even throw em Emily Boyd off. Here's another one of the Cal freshmen. Kaylee Gifford, number nine. Number three, Mia Corbin, is checked in as well. Plays it to the far side for Lucas. Nice touch there by Clark. Is possessed by Natalie Kennedy. Gifford. Didn't seem to be aware of Sanchez's presence that time. Dangerous pass. Well, it sounded like from up here that Boyd was calling for it. 
I just think the pace on it caught everyone off guard. Team, we're trying to get maybe one more attack here before the halftime whistle. Sophia Jones trying to keep that one in for the Broncos. Wasn't able to. We'll talk to the head coach of the California Golden Bears, Neil McGuire, when we reach the halftime mark. Be sure to stay with us for that before we send it back to the studio for our halftime update. Final minute of this first half. Back and forth, a lot of midfield play. Santa Clara's Maddie Gonzalez able to put the Broncos up 1 0. California has had their chances as well, but nothing too dangerous. Oh, I mean, really, since Kim came out of the match, they haven't been getting in behind at all. Final few seconds of this first half. As you hear the horn blow here is Goldman Field at Edwards Stadium. Jerry Smith and the Broncos. Very happy with that first half. Thanks to this young woman, Maddie Gonzalez. Her second goal in as many matches as the Broncos up one to nothing. Well, this was one of those goals that was against the run of play a bit. The Broncos hadn't been in their attacking third for quite some time, and then they get sprung here with Sanchez down that left flank. Cal Berkeley does not clear it well, and that lands at that late run of Maddie Gonzalez coming up. She was the one who initially sprung Sanchez, and then she was rewarded for it in the end. Santa Clara up one to nothing, thanks to that Gonzalez goal. We're joined now by the head coach of the California Golden Bears, Neil McGuire. Sorry you had to... Sit through that highlight, Neil. But what were your thoughts on the first 45 minutes from your squad? You know, I thought the first 15 minutes Santa Clara had us. The uh, control tempo until we couldn't find a rhythm. Once we found rhythm and started finding our midfielders, I felt we connected much better, got our outside backs out on the weak side. It allows us to kind of create some dominance in their, in, their, uh, in their half. They just scored a nice counter goal. We should have defended that better. I think we had one or two chances to clear it and didn't. We just got to do a better job there and hopefully nip one in the second half. Where do you think you can break them down a bit more, Neil? Well, I think Luca, when she came on in the uh, latter part of the first half there, she was threading balls through the gaps. And I think with Abigail Kim up top, we should be able to try and get him behind the back line, hopefully go to goal. And if we don't have that, maybe the outside backs forward a little bit better uh, to try and create some uh, imbalance in their back line and more balance in our attack. Neil, thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Neil McGuire, the head coach of the California Golden Bears. We're going to look for some offense in the second half because they are down right now 1-0 in Santa Clara Broncos. Send you back to our San Francisco studios where Chris Francis awaits with our halftime report. It's time to play. It's time to play. Only six days. Six days till football kickoff week. Watch the action on Pac-12 Network. Before you see it on TV. Before it's on your news feed. Before it posts to your timeline. Even before you read about it on your homepage. Her first collegiate perfect 10. Before it goes viral. He doesn't have a care in the world, man. Look at that little guy. It lives here. Download the Pac-12 Now app to see your team anytime, anywhere. There are over 480,000 college athletes. Only 2% would go pro. That means over 470,000 will not get a shoe contract. No autographs. No private jets. No fan club. No Hall of Fame inductions. Instead, they will walk away with something much more valuable. Uh, Parag Marate, Chief Strategy Officer and Executive Vice President of Football Operations. I've been with the 49ers for 16 years. I uh, started in 2001. I've held almost every job there is to have. My education and experience at Cal uh, was something that uh, I, I truly appreciate. 
it was just the, the perfect experience. It really just kind of taught me how to think and how to approach problems and how to problem solve. I really feel like I owe a lot to the university. Proudest moment, um, it was probably our uh, ribbon cutting ceremony for opening the stadium. Because, you know, for that, that was seven, eight years of really hard work trying to get that done. And uh, it just it felt uh, like a personal achievement of being able to accomplish it. My name is Parag Morate, uh, class of 1999. Go Bears! While schools might be on break, Pac-12 Network will be in session all summer long. This week, training camps have started, and the countdown to kickoff has begun. We've got everything you need to get up to speed for the upcoming football season. Pac-12 Summer on Pac-12 Network, all summer long. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Francis. Welcome inside our San Francisco studios for this soccer halftime. The Cal Bears have their hands full a bit with number 24 Santa Clara as they try to improve a 2-0 and on the young season. Arizona State, they dropped their first match of the season and today they had a chance to get that winning, winning feeling back in an exhibition against Beijing Normal. 12th minute, no score. Jazz Marie Mater volleys it over the hand of the keeper. Just goes off the underside of the crossbar. Uh, Mater had eight goals last year, led the team. Well, she had uh, two today, so Sun Devils had plenty. Four nothing winners. Now to number 20, Utah, coming off their first Sweet 16 in program history, taking on South Dakota State in the season opener. Eden Jacobson goes upper 90. That is a great shot, and it just gets in. Utah up two to one. More in the 49th minute. Paolo Vanderveen scores on a bicycle kick inside the box, goes far post. Here's another look, a bicycle, a scissor, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty sweet. Utah up 3-1. to one. And then in the 50th minute, the same score as Haley Skolmoski scores from outside the box. Utah, behind Skolmoski's two goals, wins it 4-1. to one. Good stuff from the youth. Meanwhile, Cal... Back to Cal. Some students jumped right in on the fall semester hoping to set a world record at Memorial Stadium. How about 7,196 students and the largest human letter in recorded history? Guinness Book of World Records was on hand to document it. It's a big C. How about that? From human we're just not we're not ready to, to name a starter right now. Uh, when that time comes, we will. Really, everything is on the table at that position, and uh, it doesn't affect our team in, in a negative way. I know it's a real popular discussion right now, and I understand why. Uh, but our team practicing really hard, and whoever's in there on the offense, those guys uh, rally around whoever's taking the snap. So um, when that time comes, we'll name them. But we're just not at that point. That's Cal head coach Justin Wilcox talking about his quarterbacks. We'll go back to soccer in just a few minutes. And on the other side of the break, we'll hear from Oregon head coach Willie Taggart. I'm Valina Davidson. I play basketball and my major is social. It's very tough being an international student at Cal. I don't think people quite understand or appreciate how hard it can be, but I think people do make an effort to make our pathways easier. My major is sociology and I decided on this major because I took one class and it was the only class I enjoyed and remembered I actually really wanted to do the readings. I have a few favorite memories since playing at Cal. The most recent one was the home game against UCLA where we went to triple overtime. Unbelievable. Bringing it back in, in Seattle against ASU. It's an upset in tournament history based on seeding the 10th. Seated Cal Golden Bears will advance. Coach Lindsay puts the emphasis on making sure we get involved with the schools around us. When you have a platform like we do and we're able to inspire little kids, they'll remember that and hopefully that they'll go down the right path and maybe choose basketball or their own sport and be inspired to, to use that when they grow up. Did you know the Pac-12 Network offers students live sports production training at your university? You guys excited to be out here early on a Thursday? Students can tour the production truck, build and use cameras, gain hands-on experience and extensive knowledge of live sports production. Get a clear understanding of all the roles involved in broadcasting sports. I feel super grateful for the training because I don't think that I would have the experience with production that I have and I also probably wouldn't feel so comfortable talking to new people and trying to get internships and jobs without the training day. 
As part of the initiative, it's been great to get students hands-on experience in the industry. Students work closely with and learn from seasoned Pac-12 staff and on-air talent. I think it gives you a nice foothold into the market, into the industry. Uh, I definitely learned a lot today. To join the student training program and see upcoming training dates, visit pac-12.com slash student training. Some kids you can't coach, you can't teach to be great. They just have it in them. Saturday, witness greatness with the premiere of the Pac-12 Network Original Series. 12 Greatest. The 12 Greatest Football Players from every Pac-12 institution. 12 back-to-back -back episodes. The 12 Greatest. All 12 episodes debut Saturday starting at 1. And then stream the entire first season on Pac-12 Now. Welcome back. Stanford head basketball coach Jared Haas used part of his offseason to raise money for a youth scholarship fund. He also let everyone know he is not afraid of heights. Haas repelled 46 floors down the side of the Union Square Hilton here in San Francisco. The Daredevil moved part of a fundraiser for Outward Bound California, a program that delivers challenging outdoor adventures for people of all ages and walks of life. The goal of City Skyline 2017 was to raise $300,000 from repelling down the side of buildings to the challenge of getting a successful football program back on track. That is the task ahead of Oregon head coach Willie Taggart. But as Taggart tells our Nigel Burton, he's got a blueprint to get the job done. Special team, let's go! There were a lot of names that were thrown out when this job came open. They didn't even talk to those other guys after meeting with you. What did you say in that meeting with them that blew them away so much? Um, I just had a plan. I just um, came in and, and told them my plan. We've got to outwork people and build a team, not just our program, but everybody within the athletic department. When I watched the film from last year, and I didn't see guys flying around playing for one another, and that stood out to me personally. It's intercepted! It's intercepted! First and foremost is get a team to care about one another. Our guys got to understand that the way they play is like a gift to their teammates. And our football coverage kicks off with a full week of programming. Saturday, August 26th, we have the 12 greatest, focusing on football icons in the Conference of Champions. Then it's Inside Pac-12 Football. That starts on Sunday, August 27th, a preview of each and every school. And finally, kickoff as we carry seven Pac-12 games from the 31st to September 2nd. All right, we're back with more soccer, the second half of your game after the break. You're watching Pac-12 Bay Area, home of the Cal Bears and the Stanford Cardinal. Available on Xfinity. I'm Karla Popovich, I'm on women's tennis team, I'm a junior and intended business major. I chose Cal because it's one of the best universities in the world and it also has one of the best tennis programs in the country and coming to Cal was definitely a big dream of mine. Coming here from Croatia was, was very nice and the transition went really smoothly. Um, I love campus, I love everything around it, my teammates were very helpful and everything went great. I would say my parents are definitely my biggest inspiration in life just because they put so much effort in to raise me and I wouldn't be here today without, without them. So I'm just grateful and thankful for having them. I'm Karla Popovich, I'm a junior, I'm on a women's tennis team and I'm an intended business major. Go Bears! 
Saturday. Kick off the 2017-2018 season with a full week of non-stop football action. First, take a look back at the legends of Pac-12 football with the premiere of 12 Greatest. Then, get the lowdown on everything you need to know this season with inside Pac-12 football season previews. After that, it's time to get your game face on. The best of the West take on non-conference opponents in back-to-back matchups. Football kickoff week. Coverage begins Saturday on Pac-12 Network. Welcome back to the Pac-12 Network, where the visiting Santa Clara Broncos, the 24th ranked team in the country, have a 1-0 lead over the California Golden Bears as we get a nice look at Sather Gate, the middle of campus. Cal, almost starting classes this coming Wednesday. Students will be back in class. We are on the pitch today. And Abby Kim showing why she is one of the most dangerous strikers here in the Pac-12 Conference. I mean, she's just been a handful all day long. I think Kat Ewell of Santa Clara has done a fantastic job. In that instance, Kim gets the better of her. But those two have been battling time and time again in this first half. And Wally on this right flank for the Bears has been fantastic. A bright spark early on. But not a lot to show for it. I mean, they've barely gotten in that attacking third to create those dangerous chances. Unlike the Broncos on the flip side. I mean, this was one chance that they created. Streaking down that left flank is... That incoming transfer, Sanchez, and the ball pops, pops out, excuse me, because no one from the Bears is able to clear it. Lands at the feet of Gonzalez, and she makes no mistake about it. Slides that one right past Boyd, who can't get down in that traffic. And we're joined now by the head coach of Maddie Gonzalez and the Santa Clara Broncos, Jerry Smith. Jerry, what impressed you most? What were you most happy about in that first half? I thought our defensive pressure was pretty good. You know, we didn't give Cal a lot of opportunity to have sustained possessions. And sustained possessions mean the defensive team is running around a lot. So we try to get defending over as quickly as we can by by pressing and winning the ball back quick. I thought we did a pretty good job of that. From an offensive standpoint, we, we got a lot to work on for sure. Well, give us some specifics on that offensively. What do you want to see improved as you guys get into that final third? I, I thought, you know, I thought we could have changed to the weak side a few times. Cal's doing a nice job of flooding the strong side, and uh, I thought we could have played out to the weak side and showed a little more maturity and patience in our attack, number one. Number two, when you get to the attacking third and the team is organized like Cal, you've got to break them down off the dribble, and I didn't think we have enough courage and risk-taking in the attacking third off our good dribblers because we have a few good ones, but we'll certainly take a 1-0 lead, and th- there's another goal in this game, so we got we got to fight for the second goal for sure. And were you happy with Loera in the middle? I was. You know, it's a, we played we recruited her to play center back, and she played center back last game and did a great job. But losing Hedge was a big loss for us, and uh, so we're having her fill in her shoes there. And I thought Laura did a really good job in, in the midfield, especially for not having trained there at all with us so far this uh, this year. Jerry, appreciate the time. All right, thank you. I'm Jerry Smith, the head coach of the Santa Clara Broncos, and he's coached a few good players in his time. And he married one. <laughs> Smart Brent's man right there. there. <laughs> I'm sure all of you soccer fans watching this afternoon recognize these superstars. Danielle Slayton, now the sideline reporter for the San Jose Earthquakes. And hey, there she is, That's my partner. That's a celebration. Allie Wagner won a championship with yeah. the Santa Clara Broncos. But I never won a World Cup like that woman there and the previous <laughs> woman, Julie Johnson. Details. So that details. I'm jealous. But they never won a national championship. Well, and we say you got to help out your head coach at all times, right? <laughs> Even when it comes to, to pregame and you don't have any floss on hands. <laughs> now that is love. The definition of love. Get it, honey. And we actually talked to Jerry about that because we told him we caught him. Candid camera, Jerry. Chances are we're going to show Brandy picking something out of your teeth. What was going on there? A little beef jerky. <laughs> Looks like he's snacking on some of them there, too. <laughs> Always got to keep on your protein as we get the second half underway here in Berkeley. Santa Clara with a one nothing lead off the second goal in two matches from sophomore Matty Gonzalez, the Santa Rosa native. With a fantastic finish for the visitors in the first half. Alongside Allie Wagner, I'm Kate Scott. Thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us here on the Pac-12 Network. Santa Clara pressuring already here in the second half. These two have faced off more than any other team that California has faced since their program came to be in 1982. And it is always a dogfight. Emily Boyd knows all about that in goal for the Bears. Long throw and cleared away by Kelly Fitzgerald. And Broncos will have another crack at it. 
and even interesting listening to Coach Smith say how he was disappointed in their attacking game, and that was the one thing that I think he's been so excited about coming into this season, and defensively they've been looking pretty strong. Sanchez on that left foot of hers that she loves. Looking back door, but pay a little bit too late. And Kelly Pay is off to the targets on set pieces for the Broncos. Dangerous ball. Bears looking to go on the break. Instead, Bergs Vaughn going to whistled for the foul. I don't know about that call. I wasn't sure about it either, but I don't want to. I don't want the bear to say something about it. <laughs> Wait to let the Bronco question that one. Hey, you're an unbiased journalist. Don't sell yourself <laughs> short. A couple of proud alums up here today calling this match. Feeling very old watching these youngsters do their thing. <laughs> Not just me, right? No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we won our national championship 16 years ago Woo! makes me feel old. Oh, that's for sure. See, I've just been saying 2001. I didn't want to say how many years yeah, it's actually been. Yeah, I appreciate been. that. The good days are number 10. Subbed in late first half for the Bears, and she's starting for California here in the second half after Neil McGuire told us he really liked what she brought when she came on. Maggie Bell back in. As is Julie Doyle, number 13 for Santa Clara. She was a handful for the Bears in that first half. Kelly Fitzgerald now pushing forward. Looking for Kim. Nice defense there by Arna Dodder. Everything about that by Fitzgerald was great right up until the timing of that final ball. Abby Kim had spun out early. There was a passing channel on, and then it closed down. She had to rerun. Oh, yeah. Taken down by Niles. But we'll play on. Nile now. With space on the right side, looking for Kim. Here's Abby Kim. Not enough on that one, though, to get it past Louder. No, but a couple dangerous attacks right here by the Bears. Two in a row, in fact, and both of them leading into Kim's path. That ball is perfectly weighted right in stride for Kim, but she just can't get enough on it. Difficult angle to shoot from, but she's capable. It was as you mentioned, Allie. Really the two best chances for Cal so far today. I think they're opening up a bit. First solid by two players in midfield. First Kelly Fitzgerald and then on that far side from us. I believe it was Nile. Kelly Chermbo, number 10. Back in for Santa Clara as we take a look at a little more Santa Clara women's history and been to the NCAA tournament 26 times into that college cup final four 10 times made it to two national championships and thanks to my partner uh, won that one national championship as she said 16 years ago well we should have won that second one <laughs> that's what stings about that graphic thanks guys a <laughs> uh, couple of bears in the truck <laughs> Had to get that one in. Berkeley guys? <laughs> no doubt, Berkeley guys. <laughs> well, here's Gonzalez and Sanchez, the two strikers, both over the ball. Sanchez with the service. Right into the mixer, but Boyd able to clear it away. That was a beautiful ball. Maria Sanchez. And a strong punch by Boyd. Abby Kim. Trying to cause some trouble there. Lyar Gandewal. Calm and confident on the ball for the Broncos. And here's Maddie Gonzalez, the goal scorer. That was a nice little build up there by the Broncos. 
Nice play, nice ball laid back initially, allows that service, and Emily Smith was caught up, allowed that ball in behind, and there's a good look at Emily Boyd coming off her line on that previous attempt from the set piece. Kelly Pay looking to serve. And able to get it across to Sanchez. Here's Maria Sanchez. Oh, you could tell she was just trying to use that touch to the upper V. Just missed it. Such a good idea. But all credit to Pay. This ball is pinged on a dime. I mean, she laces that. Wally misjudges it, which leaves Sanchez wide alone at that far post. She tries to just dip that over Boyd coming off her line. Good <laughs> awareness, good idea. You can see the touch, though. Rancher Junior transfer out of Idaho State. Here's Turnbow with her left. What a strike just off frame. How about that from the freshman? Jerry Smith said that he was very excited about Julie Doyle, number 13 on the right, and Kelly Turnbow, the left-footed midi you see there on the left. And Sanchez, the transfer just came in, was the, the one who took that previous shot. I mean, a lot of individual talent and brilliance on this team, and it's now about how they can build through the season and put it all together because last year as you said you know they they came together and had a great team they didn't have all the best pieces well this year they've got a lot of good pieces now it's coming together as an attacking unit Zaza plays it for Kim Kat Yule there with her again Niles dispossessed But some fun back and forth here for both teams to start the second half. It has certainly opened up, and that always benefits those midfielders because those pockets and those seams get bigger and bigger. Doesn't place it back to Heather Wally. Kelly Fitzgerald now. And that Bronco defense. Has been very sound all afternoon. You can see there, Maddie Gonzalez, just a handful. And the defensive work is there. So many times, quality front runners, crafty players don't put in that defensive work. But you can see, and Jerry alluded to at halftime, that they're putting that pressure on and it's starting up top. It's making it very difficult for the Bears to play out. Caroline Clark steals it away, passes off to Kim. Who's going at the entire Bronco defense. One against five there. And flip the script because that was a situation right there where, where the Bears are pressing. They win the ball with Caroline Clark and then here comes Abby Kim going to take on four players all by herself. And you can just see her explosiveness, her ability to take on 1v1. I mean, that touch it looks heavy, but she almost has the pace to get there. She keeps bowling people over as well. And with the Pac-12 All-Freshman team was Kim last year. Started 16 matches, the most of any Cal freshman. In 2016. Currently a member of the U.S. Women's National Team U-20 squad. Berg's Vance touches to Deza, looking ahead to Kim. And when Neil McGuire says that he's got a number 10 on the last play, that was Deza, but in this situation, <laughs> the finger waggle by Louder, I love it. Not in my house. Talked about that earlier, right? Attitude when it comes to keepers. Half of the game. <laughs> More than half, probably. We're not having that swag back there. But Deza from, from the Bears, I mean, that last buildup they had, such a nice touch on her final ball. You can see the vision and the IQ that she has to see those gaps, play those balls in behind. Cal consistently getting the ball to Kim here in the second half. It's going to make head coach Neil McGuire happy. Third spawn switching fields to Bell. We'll go at Kelly Pay. Last game for support. 
She gets it from Fitzgerald. Credit to both teams there. I mean, great patience by the Bears. Switch the point of attack, get it to this weak side, but Broncos sitting off. They knew they couldn't get pressure on it, so they just kind of absorbed it, absorbed it, allow those numbers to get back and filter. Kelly Fitzgerald who set off that last shot for California, the leading returning goal scorer for the Bears. Redshirt senior. Five goals, two assists last season. No doubt would love to get her first of 2017 here this afternoon as the Santa Clara Broncos have a one nothing lead thanks to Maddie Gonzalez. Beautiful first half strike. Heather Wally has wheels. As does Abby Kim. Nice turn there by Kim. Looking for Deza. The Cal's starting to put things together here. And they're moving the ball quickly and they're really spreading the game out. I mean, just a few passes there open things up underneath. The Broncos again staying strong defensively. Good cover in behind on that last play. California with a substitution bringing in Emma Weston for Miranda Niles. And here's Deza. It's Gerald. All the way to Bell. Maggie Bell wants that one back. So you're stomping in frustration. I mean, that one was, wasn't even close. More substitutions as Maggie Bell checks out. After that service, Haley Lucas back in. And our first look at the sophomore out of San Diego, California for the Broncos, Audrey Hager. A lot of faces. Everyone getting a chance this afternoon. Show their teammates, show their coaches they belong in that starting 11. Again to all. Nice little touch there by Doyle. Back to Argandawal. Back to Doyle now. Here's Hegers. Ahead to Sanchez. Good one to idea with Hegar. Continuing that run. Now California on the break. Caroline Clark. Asking for it back. She gets it from Deza. Abby Kim. The pair of Broncos on her. Kelly Fitzgerald gives it away. Maria Sanchez now. Oh, what a move by number nine. Back and forth we go. Just some nice individual moments. Abby Kim wasn't rewarded on that last attack by the Bears. She had fantastic movement. I mean, her initial run, her second run, everything was on. It just the pass was lacking. The awareness to play her in behind wasn't there. But you like to see that out of these young front runners is, is the awareness to make the right run, and she made a couple excellent runs. Looking to send West into the corner. Just a bit too much on it. The Broncos will have another substitution. D.B. Pridham checking in for Kelly Turnbow, who unfortunately for the Broncos, dealing with a, a bit of a knock right now. Might be something to keep an eye on. I know they're trying to manage her minutes, her, Doyle's minutes as well. Bears off the turnover. Here's Kim on the run. And the flag is up. 
that one will not count. But again, California finding Kim. And this is just a turnover that, that pops down to the feet of Wally, I believe it looks like. And Kim just an edge ahead of that back line. Right call from that angle, at least. What a touch by our Gondawal. This game is really opening up. Pridham now. With Haggard on the far side. Pridham will go around. And get it back. Nice run by TV Pridham. Into the middle just over the head of Maddie Gonzalez. Julie Doyle though keeps it in. And that attack was begging for a finish. It was so beautifully scripted. And now California sending ahead to their front runner. Kim turns around and seems to say back to her team, I wanted that one to my feet. <laughs> you never got that ever, right? Direction from a forward? No way. I'm telling them what to do. <laughs> Strikers never were upset with their midfielders. No. They're just asking a lot out of her right now. They keep sending her. I know that's her strength, but a little balance in the attack. Weston now. Can Lucas get to it just a little too far? As you mentioned, Allie, this has really opened up. The pace much quicker than we were seeing in the first half. Again, it's interesting. I mean, when you when you try to analyze who does that benefit, I, I know that Jerry Smith likes an open match for his team because of the attack of personalities they have. But I do think with the athleticism, especially with Kim up top with Berkeley, Cal Berkeley, excuse me, I, I think it's a it could benefit them as well. I I don't know if it gives an edge to either side. Delza looking for Kim. Well, you can see why Neil McGuire is so excited about number 10 freshman Luka Deza. Yeah, I really like her awareness and her sense in those pockets. Fortunately, she's getting subbed out, get a little rest right now, but she looks to be a bright spot for this team. Definitely not playing like a freshman in her collegiate debut. Very calm and confident out there. Yeah, and some players just have that awareness and natural instinct for it. Really cleverly, Maggie Bell check in. The throw comes right to both of their heads. California tries to keep this in. Maria Sanchez says, I don't think so. It's a too optimistic touch there by Sanchez. <laughs> California looking for the equalizer. Santa Clara with a 1-0 lead. Here's Lucas. Nice bender. And just off the mark for Weston. But the freshman number eight out of Sweden. A nice job to get a boot on that oh, one. Oh, that is such a good ball whipped in. It's curling, tailing away from Louder. And Weston just sneaks in on that back post. Doesn't connect well with it, but a brilliant ball whipped in. And really using the, the flanks to get in behind Broncos in that last attack. Weston was involved in quite a bit of trouble for the Bears on Friday night. Assisted on Abby's first goal in their 2-1 to win over UC Irvine. And here's Kim again. And they're Wally now. Nice touch there by Weston to get it to Cleverly. Bergsvant. Amy Lucas. That's that right foot of Weston. She just wants to take it with that side. With that side, she's got to take it with her other leg. Opens herself up for that initial tackle. Lucas, unable to get off the service she wanted. California with a nice bit of possession, but nothing to show for at that time. Kelly Fitzgerald. Some nice footwork there on the far side. Cleverly looking for help at the top of the box. 
and we can talk about Deza and some of these other Cal players being so instrumental, but I think Fitzgerald has been fantastic for them. Breaking the line, setting play in there. She's the one who initiates that last attack. Kim going at Yule. That battle has been very entertaining so far this afternoon. There's Fitzgerald. Broncos have been so disciplined in getting their numbers behind the ball when Cal Berkeley does get on the break, when they do find some of that space that I don't think Berkeley, Cal Berkeley can sit on it as much as they are. And that last attack, for instance, with Fitzgerald, it slowed down after she released it. I believe it was 22 cleverly on it who just spun out and allowed all those Broncos to get in behind. They've got to keep up the pace when they get in this final third like in these moments. Wally. Broncos again, able to get behind it. They've just been very disciplined in retreating. The Indigo Gibson pushing forward now. California pushing. Putting the pressure on, trying to get that equalizer. Here comes Santa Clara on the break. Gonzalez and Sanchez slow things down. Oh, beautiful touch there by Argandawal. Goes happy to play keep away with a one nothing lead. What a bit of defense there by the Cal freshman Emily Smith. Again, Cal looking for Abby Kim to use those long legs of hers, but Kim's got to be a little bit winded at this point in the half, <laughs> doing that so much already. I mean, that was a moment where they could spring in behind. into Bell. Bell off the mark. Just a careless giveaway in that situation, but the initial ball into that seam and behind the, the Bronco midfield was a lovely one for Berkeley to exploit. Bergsvon with space. Kind of feels like that point in the half where both teams need a little shot of energy. And they're going to get it. A line change of sorts this afternoon. A lot of new faces check in for both sides. Number 14, Sophia Jones, one of the substitutions for the Broncos. Look at Deza, number 10, back in for Cal. Jamie Gonzalez, number 99, another of the substitutes, laying it off to our goal scorer, Gonzalez. Miranda Niles, number 15, back in for Cal. Thought she had escaped from a couple of Broncos. Knocks the ball in. Go past the touch line, so it'll be Santa Clara throw. Jay Gonzalez to print him. He's able to get across off more danger. In that box for California. And just immediately you see the retreat of the Broncos. I mean, they've got a lot of players in the box, and as soon as that ball's turned over, you get your head up and you look, and Cal only has one, two players up with that ball that's releasing pressure. There's Kayla Fong, number 13 for the Bears. Tedeza. He's got space. Number 10 cracks a shot, but... Dumping over the crossbar. 
like how much of a crack. <laughs> <laughs> a loft of yeah. sorts. <laughs> and she knows she can do better with that. Freshman out of Notre Dame High School. He's trained with the U15 and U18 U.S. Women's National Teams. Neil McGuire, very happy to keep her here in the Bay Area for Cal. Says that her size can also cause some trouble in the midfield because she's got such a loose center of gravity. It's similar to Gonzalez for Santa Clara. And it can be so elusive, so shifty. Gerald again. I mean, she's the one who sprung the, the ball wide here to Lucas on this near side. She's had an excellent game. Good decisions. Good awareness in that pocket. It's Gerald played in all 21 matches for the Bears in 2014 and 2015. Missed seven matches last year with injury, but able to, as we mentioned, score five goals. Layoff two assists in the 14 matches that she did appear in last season. Redshirt senior out of Dana Hills High School. Showing why she has played so much for Cal here today. Maggie Bell. Looking ahead to Niles. Is able to knock it off with Kat Yules, or so she thought. Which her on Ozdemir says not so. Let me take another look. And a good look at these two. It's hard for me to tell. It almost looks <laughs> like she does get that deflection. It should have been a corner, but that's all generated by this play on the near side by the Bears. Really well done in solving the pressure. You know, you think oh, potentially they're going to switch the point of attack, but now it makes that run across that back line and gets him behind. Probably should have been rewarded with the corner. California back on the attack. There's a <laughs> doing what she can for that foul you saw. Gandual put her arms up. I don't think number 23 could have done anything more. Oh, it looks like she. Deza just picks up this second ball. And then Argondawal gets the touch on the ball, but it gets a little bit of the player in between. Soft call. But nonetheless, a dangerous opportunity right here from the edge of the 18. For the Bears. It will be number 16, Kelly Fitzgerald, lining it up for Cal. Unless the ladder sets her wall. At this point, the second ball becomes so important. California looking to equalize. Down one nothing here in the 75th minute. Fitzgerald right towards the frame and just over the crossbar. Or not. <laughs> just the first ball. I mean, <laughs> that one, she laces that one, gets through it well. That one doesn't look like it misses by much. She just has a go, says, I'm going to beat you louder 1v1 here. That ball is not moving much so well struck and it just rises above that crossbar at the last moment Louder luckily sees that one go Fitzgerald absolutely cracked that one you think the redshirt senior wants to even this game up? I think so it's been fantastic Santa Clara beat the Bears in double overtime last season down at Stevens Stadium. California looking for a little revenge here in 2017, but so far, it was Santa Clara with a 1 0 lead. Bears putting the pressure on, though, here in this second half. Looking for that equalizer. Caroline Clark tried to slot it through, but the Broncos there again. Really solid defending. I mean, I'm impressed with the organization and the commitment. Spacing seems very good. Oh. 
Lucas Tedeza. Turns. There's Niles. And just wide. How about that ball by Deza? That is fantastic. I mean, you talk about special players with special vision. This is a moment that, that not a lot of players sense can see or play that, and have the touch to whip that in. I mean, she barely faces up. Kat Ewell can't do anything to step because she faces and plays it so quickly. And then the texture on it to dive that in behind. Beautiful stuff for there from Deza. California getting their chances. Final 15 minutes now here in Berkeley. Another chance for the Bears. This one off the mark. You can feel the pressure. You can feel the intensity. And the Bears are putting into things now. Haley Lucas hasn't had the best day distributing out of the back. She's got a couple four square balls that she's given away, and even that ball's overcooked down the end line. Looking for Kayla Fong that time as Abby King gets set to check back in for the Bears. She will check in for the aforementioned Fong. Cal hoping for goal number three from Kim here in 2017. Score both goals for the Bears in Friday night's 2-1 win over UC Irvine. Got a slew of chances already this afternoon. Can she get one? Behind ladder into that net. Spent a chunk of her July back in Europe with the U-20 women's national team. the four-year starter for Santa Clara Kelly Pay. Kim with some space. Broncos though doing a good job to get back. Boy, Santa Clara's defense has been good this afternoon. It's been pretty impressive. Anytime it's looked like they've been in danger. Ryan Clark now, freshman out of Lafayette, Akalanas High School. Looking to build the attack. Here's Kim. Can Kim get a shot off? She does. And Abby Kim and the Bears have equalized. And just as we were praising the Santa Clara Bronco defense, a 1-2 in the middle of the center of park. Sophia Jones lets her player go. She gets one 2 and that's what opens up everything for Cal Berkeley to get in behind. But Abby Kim has been a handful all day long, and this is an opportunity that she just rolls her defender on. That's Arna Daughter. And then that one just sneaks right in below Louder. Who's trying to stand tall, trying to stay big. You've got the recovery runs trying to get him behind, but just not enough on it. Abby Kim says, thank you very much. I'll have goal number three in my second game of the season. What a nice build-up, too, by number 15 there, Miranda Niles. But for Abby Kim, three goals in the entire 2016 season. And as you mentioned, Allie, three goals now in two games here in 2017. Well, you just got the sense that it was going to come for them at some point. And once again, just like these two were last season <laughs> at this time, we are even with 10 minutes to play. 
well deserved and well worked that's for sure California after falling behind a one nothing on that Maddie Gonzalez goal in the first half able to equalize here late in the seconds and they're keeping the pressure on Caroline Clark Kelly Pay just able to get there for the Broncos but these two the 45th meeting today between them and it is almost even 20 wins for California 17 for Santa Clara and seven draws so evenly matched another dangerous ball but louder honest this time such a good look there by Kuro Gonzalez to Loera back to Gonzalez can she get there Indigo Gibson clears it away you can just feel it how much both of these teams want to be the owner of this Bay Area rivalry this game has the feeling like there's more goals in it that's for sure crowd getting into it here at Goldman Field at Edwards Stadium Sanchez showing off the footwork the Mexican national transfer to Santa Clara and you can see why the Broncos are so happy to have her just a nice bit of skill there in the, in the corner but the Bears do a nice job they've got those two players on her that she splits but it's the bottom of the funnel that picks up that ball Jones now nice turn there's the one of the goal scorers for Santa Clara from Friday Julie Doyle and not happy with herself after that pass you know, especially because she had Kelly pay wide open on this near side early but she opts to go herself initially there's a look at it just a poor touch out of bounds Doyle scored in the 88th minute for Santa Clara in Friday's match against San Jose State. The first goal of her collegiate career gave the Broncos the 2 to 1 win. And that young woman right there scored both goals for California on Friday as they beat the East Year Van Anteaters 2 to 1. So both of these teams 1 0 on the season looking for win number two. Never comes easy. And they are squaring off with each other. Santa Clara, the 24th ranked team in the country. California, unranked in the preseason. Could be ranked here soon. Deza trying to slot that one through. Caroline Clark creeping on the outside of the box. And we'll go the other way. Both teams picking up the pace here. Final eight minutes of action. They're picking up the pace because of the energy, absolutely, but there's space to be had, and they both can see it and sense it. Trying to get into those gaps early. And that last attack the, the Broncos had could have been split wide open. The pass was just off by Argondawal, but Matty Gonzalez was running into a nice, a nice channel offensively. Clark with some space decides to have at it. It was reminiscent of Deza's shot earlier. <laughs> similar spot, similar trajectory. A couple of freshmen feeling confident. Not too used to this Berkeley win just yet. Clark right back on it. Bruce Vaughn had time but gives it away. Wally got a taste of that one. Number 33 all over the pitch today for California. Gibson and Gonzalez. Oh, what a nice back heel to Sanchez from Gonzalez. And 
Now Kim. 1v4. Caroline Clark. Back to the goal score for the Bears, Kim. And both teams getting chances back and forth, 18 to 18. Julie Doyle. Michaela George, Kelly Fitzgerald reads it. That is dispossessed by Loera. Nice turn by Argandwall. Just a lot of turnovers right now. Some <laughs> tired legs, poor decisions going on. It's been so open. Sometimes you just need someone to get on it and slow it down and really take a breath. As much as you want to push to get the result, you don't want to lose it either. Here's Niles for Kim. And Bears will have a corner. And Niles has been great coming out of that midfield. She's been one of their attacking weapons. She just gets in around the edge. Nice ball played in. Kim overruns that near post, which is going to make any shot. She tries to get off tough, but she's covered well by the Broncos. Kelly Fitzgerald taking the corner for the Bears. And we'll sub in a few before this set play. Abby Kim with the equalizer. Just a few minutes ago, we are now tied at one in the 87th minute. Dangerous corner there by Fitzgerald. The ladder was on it. There's were Asking for another corner. Thought ladder's punch went out. Fast the end line. Assistant referee says no. Guess who? Kelly Fitzgerald again. She has been everywhere for California. They're just covering back on that last one. I still go to the decision making to try to play quickly. If you're Doyle, maintain possession. There's nothing on forward. You're trying to send a player 1v4. Unless it's Abby Kim, don't send someone in that situation. Ladder and the Broncos beat California in double overtime last season. And then we go to extra time again here in 2017. Emma Weston almost had something to say about that. Just good play between the lines by Weston there. She drives at that back line. No one steps to her. They step to her late. Tries to have a go with that right pick she loves so much. Tails away. Weston, a freshman out of Stockholm, Sweden, is six goals and 15 appearances for the Swedish U.S. national teams. Swedish youth national teams, that is, pardon me. Can't play for both squads. And here's Abby Kim taken down in the box, and the referee points to the spot. And here it is, that ball's played in behind. You can see the pace and the strength of Kim as she tries to split the two defenders. So hard to tell there if she's taken down, if she just goes down on her own volition. I mean, she's been mixing it up all day long. Nonetheless, her hard work is rewarded, and now Berkeley has an opportunity to step up and take the lead. You want to talk about stopping Berkeley, you got to stop Abby Kim. Three goals this season. Three goals for Cal, and now we'll see if the fourth can be created because of her. Retro senior Kelly Fitzgerald, captain for the Bears, lining up to take this PK. Trying to exact revenge for Cal, who fell in double overtime to the Broncos last season down in Santa Clara.
And Fitzgerald puts the Bears on top 2-1. to one. So the redshirt senior will go on the score sheet thanks to the hard work of her sophomore striker, Abby Kim. Well, how about that cool, calm strike from the spot by Fitzgerald. She's been fantastic all game long, sitting in that deeper seam in the midfield. Well, here she gets her opportunity to step up and put her team ahead of the Broncos. Well taken. First goal for Fitzgerald here in 2017. So now Santa Clara, who had the lead for the first 75 minutes. Giving up two goals here in this second half. And they will be putting on the pressure here in the last minute. Regulation trying to push this game to extra time. And they had looked so strong defensively all game long and two little lapses have cost them. And the Bears on the attack again. Abby Kim lets a shot go. Might have been better off just dribbling to the corner there for Cal. Broncos coming the other way. Here's Julie Doyle. Great point, Kate. Gonzalez, who scored the Broncos' first goal on Friday and their lone goal here this afternoon. Final few seconds of this match. Doyle sends it into the mixer. And the Bears... Able to clear this away and come from behind this afternoon here in Berkeley to knock off the 24th ranked Santa Clara Broncos by a score of 2-1. to one. Well, that's some resilience. That's some mental strength there by the Golden Bears. I think overall a relatively even match, but when you have someone like Abigail Kim up on your front line, I mean, she is a handful for you to deal with, and it was hard for Broncos to deal with her over 90 minutes, and they paid the price at the end. What a fantastic afternoon of soccer here in the East Bay. That young woman, the redshirt senior, Kelly Fitzgerald, stepping to the spot in the 89th minute, finishing to give California the 2-1 to one win. And a couple bright spots for the Golden Bears. I thought the, the freshman Desert was fantastic. I think Fitzgerald, as you just pointed out, had a magnificent game. And then Kim up top. I mean, she is such a potent striker. Someone that, even if Cal is having a terrible day, they can always look to be a threat in behind. And then that opens things up underneath. So this is going to be a team that a lot of, a lot of opponents are going to have their hands full with in the Pac-12 at least. For the Broncos, again, you know, Jerry Smith said these winning these games aren't important. Last season they started out winning 3 out of 12. Well, coming out and getting results in these early matches isn't important. It's about what you build on and how you grow as a team and evolve. And there's a lot to be learned from this game for them. But I think there was also bright spots. I think defensively they did look good. I think offensively you can see they have the weapons. So for both these groups, I think we're going to see them in postseason and probably making deep runs. I know it's early, but you just get the sense that they've got quality sides. The Bears applauding their fans here at Goldman Field at Edwards Stadium. Beautiful Sunday afternoon before school starts this week here in Berkeley. Great fans out here today. There was a number of them out here on Friday night as well. And they're happy this afternoon because the Bears now 2-0 on the season after knocking off UC Irvine on Friday night by a score of 2-1. And this afternoon here in Berkeley getting past the 24th ranked Santa Clara Broncos. By a score of 2-1, to one, thanks to that young woman right there. Number 16, Kelly Fitzgerald with the decisive PK in the 89th minute. And the young woman who scored the Bears' first goal, the equalizer, and then drew the penalty that led to that PK. Here she is, Abigail Kim. Abby, what a season you are having so far. Two games in, already three goals. What is working so well for you already so early in this season? Um, I think it's just like the whole team's chemistry working together. We're all like really hyped to be together. You know, the first few games of the season, everyone's really going hard, and I think that we just keep going hard together, and that's what makes a team just working really well together. And what are your expectations for this group? I mean, you guys have been seen each other in preseason. Now the two results early on. How do you feel about this team going forward? Um, I think we're really deep team we got a lot of people on the bench who can come in and make a difference and I think that we can make it really far this year I think it's gonna be a great year for the Bears
And we got to talk about you. I mean, at some point in the game, you're saying, guys, don't send me to space. Play me to feet. Yes, um, I feel like my team got used to just always playing me three balls. But, like, if you keep doing that, the other team will know to just drop. So I'll say, like, play it to my feet. I can play it back to someone, and then we can go through. Or just keep it a little bit. Not always through. But, like, if it's on, definitely. But I feel like sometimes my feet is good, too. Well, we were just taking a look as you were talking, Abby, at, at the first goal. where They did play to feet, and then you drawing that penalty. Yeah. Was it a penalty? I definitely was a penalty because <laughs> uh, another little step, and I think I would have gotten a goal. So, But I'm happy Kelly got it because I know she can finish it. So I was really excited that it was a PK because I knew Kelly would finish it. And let's talk about you individually and your development. Where do you think you can get better as this season progresses personally? Um, I think I can get better take, uh, taking shots from farther to like make defenders weary of me from back, not always like through balls and stuff. So if I could get more shots off or like get it to my feet and then maybe turn or just come in a little bit more, not always using my pace because I want people to be like, oh, she's fast, but she can always use always like use the ball too. So we got to watch both ways. And how about Desa? How, how about these young players coming in? Who do you like setting you up, playing you in behind the most? Um, I think Luca Diza is really great. We work good together. Like, she's right below me, and we play well off each other. And I think Emma Weston is a really good player. She's from Sweden, and she's got a lot of talent, and she's really tough to mark. So I feel like us three were really good. And, like, a lot of people off the bench, like Caroline Clark, she came in and made a really big difference. We got a lot of people. Have you been watching NWSL? Who's your favorite team? you got to say RL Ships team, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> well, that's the right answer, Abby. You had the right answer again here today. Three goals in two games. Your California Golden Bears are 2-0 two, uh, two oh on the season. We appreciate you spending some time with us after today's match. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Great job. And his sophomore, Abigail Kim. And those are the California Golden Bears who just knocked off number 24, Santa Clara. But, Allie Wagner, what a match on both sides. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said earlier, positive positive attributes, positive things to take from this game overall for both coaches and a lot to work on. And that's what you want to see. You want to see your weaknesses exposed early on so you can fix them and move forward. Well, for Allie Wagner and all of us here at the Pac-12 Network, I'm Kate Scott. We so appreciate you spending your sin Sunday afternoon with us. As do the California Golden Bears who knock off their Bay Area rivals, the Santa Clara Broncos, by a score of 2-1. to one. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon, everybody. Yeah, hit. We are in unbelievable shape. We are going to play unbelievably fast. We are unbelievably fresh. What a catch. Oh, touchdown, catch. Oh, my, what a catch. Hey, how do you like this? You like this? Hey, get a great pass rush, uh, Get a great pass rush. This is a tough sport. Hell yeah! The University of California's last coaching era is long gone. The new staff of the Golden Bears has brought with it added attention and uncertainty for the season at hand. You know, I'm so excited to play Northwestern because I don't, I don't, I don't know if we are good or not. I, I think, I think we have a chance to be. I think there's talent. I think they care. And usually those things make you good. And you know, you open up against a ten and three team that's returning a great number of their starters. So we're going to find out, you know, the first week, are we any good or not? So we'll know. It'll be a, a lot of questions will be answered at that time. You know, the nature of our business is if you don't win, you don't have a job. And that's never fun to, you know, to, to go through that process. And, and I feel bad for people. You know, I feel bad for Sonny. You know, I feel like I disappoint him. And, uh, you know, I always think about from when he started to, to where he is now, and me not wanting to fail him, you know, on his climb. For new head coach Sonny Dykes, the daily grind begins before dawn. But considering the personnel decisions he must immediately confront, sleep is a luxury that must wait. Who do the players believe in? Who do they have confidence in? Who do they think gives them the best chance to win? That's what you're looking for. Cal's final practice before their first game is a prime opportunity for Coach Dykes to check the mood of his team. 
How are you feeling? You good? Yep, yeah. All right, good. You ready to go? Everybody feeling good, you think? Yeah, everybody's feeling good. Ready to Legs go. are good? Legs are feeling good. Good. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? You ready? Ready. Be fine, huh? Cal's fresh start will be fueled by quarterback Jared Goff, a true freshman who is prepared for his first game with veteran boys. When you come out, I'm trying to re- It's been a long time. I remember my first college snap, and it wasn't as a true freshman. But what do you think your heart rate will be? Uh, Pretty high. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what average heart rate is, but it'll be above the average. Will you try to hide that and be all uh-huh. cool, collected, or do you mind letting it go a little bit? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I'll probably try to hide it. I, mean, I, I know that everyone's going to be all hyped up, and I can't be just the most hyped up one there. I've kind of got to keep it together a little bit. I mean, I'll, inside I'll be you know excited, but on the outside I'm probably going to stay pretty reserved. How complicated uh, is the system? <laughs> not yeah. at all. Right. Super simple. And that's one of the big misnomers, right? Yeah. Everyone looks at all the things you do and how fast you play, and oh my gosh, it's yeah. so complex, but it's... It's not. I mean, I could teach it to a 10-year-old, probably. In any passing attack, timing is critical. Success or failure, often decided by the number of seconds the quarterback has in the pocket. Man, press quarterbacks. Let's trust our guys. If we get it, I hope we do get it. Don't know if we will, but we hope we do. Again here, safety hangs, mesh switch. Have a mental clock in your brain, and you watch every route and count to yourself. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Watch how many of these throws take from 2.5 to 3.5 seconds. And if you guys can win for 3 to 3.5 seconds, then we're going to score a lot of points. The key that we have to do, like we've talked about, is we have to treat... A game just like practice. We have to have the same mindset when we go play Saturday that we have every single day in practice. That's go out and do my job. Okay, and that's really what it's all about. As days tick down to hours, Cal coaches meet to finalize the game plan for the opener against Northwestern. But the first order of business will be a team meeting with Cal Athletic Director Sandy Barber. We'll do a 4.30 team meeting. So send out a team works. Sandy just is going to Let's talk to the team for just a 